What's going on everyone? This is Greer back here bringing you guys the latest in the behind the bar reviews for Seven Deadly Sins Chapter 309 Epilogue 3. Now, it's been a long time since I've been back here. It feels like it's been like a month. Meanwhile, it's only been about, you know, a week, maybe a week and a half. But uh, either way, Chapter 309 dropped and... Okay. Alright. We really seem to... Apparently they're going to stop the epilogue titles after this one, three epilogues, so that throws out my idea of there being seven epilogues and then one final chapter, but my idea that maybe around, I think it was the chapter 302, 303 uh, chapter, I remarked that maybe, you know, by the pacing they're going, this is going to end by maybe 310, 312, and by the looks of the wording at the last page of this chapter, it's looking like maybe, I, I don't think the last chapter is the last one, regardless what it says, unless the last chapter is a big 35 page, 40 page chapter, which is possible. If that's the case, then I don't see, uh, I think next week or whatever chapter 310 drops is probably our last week, guys. And well, I got mixed feelings about that. But anyways, let's just get into the chapter. This is not the time to be talking about the ending that is arbitrary at this point. Uh, so, Epilogue 3. We open up with a ring that I just don't care about. I do not care about the, uh, the whole Bartra getting a ring that's got the, you know, hawk on it or whatever. Um, it could be a way to communicate when she goes off, uh, where she's going and stuff. But, at this point, the, we're either gonna get an answer to that ring in the next chapter, so there's no point in making, like, a theory-type video or making a bunch of speculation, because honestly, we're at the end, tail end here, and I got more questions from previous arcs than I want more questions brought up in these last few chapters. So honestly, it's it's some ring. Uh, Elizabeth apparently crafted it and gave it to Bartra uh, for an early present, of course, because she's leaving, and this whole thing is like, okay, well, you know, we're we're going to do that thing, Veronica and Margaret, don't worry about it. Oh, ho, ho, and he's skipping around the castle and stuff. And it's like, okay, um, once again, if this ending wasn't rushed, if it wasn't like the way it is, then this might be alluding to something, might be good foreshadowing. But since we already know what it is by the end of this chapter, whatever. Um, once again, the ring probably has something to do with the connection to Elizabeth. Maybe like a, a almost like a, you know, Power Rangers watch, a, you know, deep, 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 you know sort of idea, maybe, I don't know, um, but that's my only thoughts on that. After that, where are we? Oh yeah, we go to uh, everyone sulking in the bar, and we see the continuation of these conversations when the guys are taking a piss, and when uh, Elizabeth was talking to all the girls, and basically everyone's like all solemn, and uh, Meliodas plumps himself into um, Elizabeth's chest and said, ah, they're just tired from the first big party we had in a while and stuff, and they're all gloomy and stuff. It's like, well, the girls are even more quiet. And then they both reminisce about the ending part where, and once again, this is so out of character for them, okay? This is so out of damn character, uh, for me anyways. Because we shoot back to Elizabeth, right? And Deanne is losing her shit to Elizabeth, going like, well, what can we do? Like, uh, you're going to, the one you love is going to be gone forever. How can you say this is all right, that it's okay? There's got to be something we can do about it and stuff. And Elizabeth, who... Deanne is a bad friend here in this regard because even if Elizabeth was okay with it, or let's say as a friend, if she, the only option is she's putting on a brave face and she's trying to get through it without breaking down, without being selfish. They've just done the selfless act. She's trying not to be selfish with Meliodas or the world anymore, right? Because his presence alone, we've seen what it's been doing to the world. And she even states, if Meliodas stays here, if I ask him to stay, this is going to bring terrible consequences to, to ourselves and the world. It's not fair to the rest of the world for, for the sake of the two of us sort of idea. So there isn't anything that can be done about that. If she was putting on a brave face, she didn't have this plan, which once again, we all knew it. We all knew it was going to happen. But let's just say for a moment it wasn't. For some reason, Goddess Elizabeth cannot go wherever Meliodas is going. And... She was just putting on a brave face. How is it? How is it that Deanne is good for saying, you're so cold, how can you say it's okay? And, and basically trashing her friend when her friend might be sitting there teetering on a piece of thin ice. Going, 
Like, she doesn't like this situation no more than the rest of you, probably less so. But if that's the case, remember that to defeat the Demon King, there are consequences to war. So I, I find this any character for Elizabeth to not at least explain. I mean, actually, Elizabeth did explain. That's the thing. It's not even out of character. It's the fact that this whole Seven Deadly Sins is supposed to be like the good version of Nakama. It's supposed to be the good fairy tale friendship vibe. And Deanne is being absolutely terrible at reading the situation. Two things. Either she's got a plan and she can't say anything, which is odd. I don't know why she wouldn't just bring up her plan to the girls. Or she's teetering, she's putting on a brave face, and she can't stand this. But what else is she supposed to do? Sacrifice the earth for one person? Now, in my case, yes, you, you guys will, if, if it comes between me and my wife, guess what uh, choice mine is. But nonetheless, it just, it, it bugs me. It bugs me because it's being a horrible friend to, to lash out like that at her. And then we see the same thing. Now, it is within character for Hawk. Because Hawk has always treated Meliodas a, a different way. Their dynamic is different. But then we cut over to Meliodas reminiscing about the continuation of their conversation. And it's the same idea. He basically goes, have you told Elizabeth about this? Like, where are you going to go? And he makes a joke that he's going to be the first bartender in the demon realm. He'll probably have to go to the demon realm and such. And instead of people saying, like, is there anything can be done? How can we help you? There must be something. And letting Meliodas try to explain, they all or at least Hawk in this case, are like attacking him about this, going, you think Elizabeth is okay with this? You're just going to leave her after all this time? And he's like, well, you know, like, what can I do? You know, I thought about bringing up the courage to tell her I have to leave, but I chickened out, you know? And he's putting on that brave face. Once again, this is a total brave face thing. Meliodas, you're a fool. And all this stuff like, no, that is not being a good friend. He literally, Meliodas wore this on his sleeve because he doesn't know about Elizabeth's plan, which is odd, but he doesn't know about Elizabeth's plan yet. So him saying, him telling them, he might be putting on that smile. But remember, a smile, what people smile about, people, what they show you isn't what they actually feel inside. And they should know this about Meliodas by now. Bond should have spoken up. Somebody should have spoken up by now. Gother, understanding all the ways of the heart now, should say, like, should have said, stop, Captain Hawk, you know. Uh, this is not the way. So this is, I don't know. Like, like if I told you guys that same thing, if I went up and I said, you know, I, I tried to bring up the courage to tell her that I have to leave. It's out of my control. But I, I chickened out because I can't face her. Those are, even though he's putting on the facade of the smiling face, those are true words. He is terrified. He's scared inside. He, nothing can be done. And it, it sucks for him. And instead of saying, like, I don't know what we can do for you, you know, sort of being a good friend, they're blaming him. Like, this is awful. I, this is, at a, it's not really, it's kind of out of character, but not really. I don't know one word or one phrase to pinpoint what's wrong. But does that make sense to you guys? This is so totally batshit wrong. It's just wrong. I don't like any of that. And then we jump over to the fact that they're not actually heading to Leonis. They're heading to Edinburgh. And they see the hole that um, Meliodas made back then. If you haven't seen the Vampires of Edinburgh, uh, Merlin basically wraps it up. 12 years ago, the sins were dispatched. Do blah, blah, blah. Vampire sealed, blah, blah, blah. But he resealed what we all figured. Now, I was holding out hope that maybe Nakaba would pull a twist and maybe Gelda's actually, he did kill her or something like that. I don't admit necessarily mean I want Gilda dead, but it, like at this point, this is also a cookie cutter, especially this conversation with Gilda. He releases the darkness. Him and Elizabeth go down in the hole. He releases the darkness, breaks the seal, and Gilda's sitting there like, oh, hello, Millie. It's been, you know, I made a bet with myself. Now, remember, this has been 12 years. I made a bet with myself that if the next person, if Zeldris came for me sort of idea, I would never leave his side ever again, regardless of the consequences. But alas... He didn't. He's not here sort of idea. And he, she basically says, like, I basically bet it all or nothing. The way this dialogue is, and I checked two translations, guys, this is a terrible conversation. This makes no sense. Once again, wrapped up shonen endings with no payoff. We finally find out that Zell just went missing after the battle. And we have no idea where he is. He's, what they claim is that he's no longer in this world. I don't think that means he's dead, because he would have said Zeldris is missing, he's no longer in this world. I think that maybe he went to purgatory, or he went to the back to the demon realm, or something, right? 
Uh, but he, he wasn't found. And he had a terrible wound. Hopefully darkness cured, you know, fixed him up or something. Maybe he's planted something with the center. Plot twist. It'd be good. But, um, no, right here, right here, this conversation is terrible because she said, basically, I bet all or nothing. If Zelda showed up, I would never leave his side. Dot, dot, dot. Well, so he didn't show up. So now you're not going to be with him, right? That That is what is insinuated here. She doesn't blatantly say, I will never look at him again if he does this. But that is left, that is so thrown at you, like shoved down your throat sort of thing. And I'm sitting there like, yeah, okay, I, I get that, right? Meliodas says three things, and she totally 180s her, her bet. After 12 years, she spent 12 years in the seal betting with herself over this and going, if Zeldris isn't the one to wake me up, then that's it. We can't be together. Takes And actually, the first couple of lines, the first dialogue bubbles, don't even convince her. So Meliodas says, like, one thing, and that totally reshapes 12 years of waiting. Oh, and then she has the gall to talk to Elizabeth about this. Oh, no, this is terrible, guys. I'm happy to see Gelda again. I like Gelda. I like Zeldris. But this is stupid. This is absolutely stupid. Because they go on there and basically say, no, he never stopped thinking about you. What he wanted this whole time was you. And she sits back and goes, no, that's not what he wanted. I know now, know now that what he wanted was the throne of the Demon King. That was his true desire all along. Then Meliodas basically just says, this is all he says, verbatim, this is all he says is, but he wanted basically, yes, he wanted a peaceful demon world. And in lieu of that, he needed to be at the top. He needed the throne of the demon king to bring peace to the demon world so that he could be with you and no one could tell him no. That's all he says. That's all he tells her. And from this whole ambiguous, oh, well, Zeldris isn't here, he's not the one who came to get me, dot, 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 went from that to, oh, I will find him now, and there's a Zeldris, and then Meliodas goes somber again, I'm a failure of an older brother, brother, Zeldris is no longer in this world, and she's like, it does not matter if he's in this world or not, I shall follow him wherever it takes me, Elizabeth, you should understand that well, don't you? I'm like, you just basically left it ambiguous that since Zeldris isn't here, you're never going to be with him. And a couple of lines from Meliodas, and you're totally convinced. And then you're like, the heart knows what the heart wants. And you've got these wise words for Elizabeth, this whole, I would follow him to hell and back sort of mentality. When you, five seconds ago, were going to leave him. Or not try to find him. Or give up on him. Oh my god, this is terrible. This is bad, guys. I... I I, this ain't redeemable. That is not redeemable part. No one's going to convince me that that's not what it's saying. So when we do the Boris Hat podcast later on this week, I hope, because um, Grim's back and everything, check that out. I, I, I'm not taking, I'm not taking a loss for this point because this is this is bad. Um, after that, what happens is you know they leave and Elizabeth, you know, reminisce about what Gelda said. The sin, see that um, Gelda's flying out of the hole that Meliodas had created back then. And then they basically go to the party. They go to the party. They're all chatting and stuff. Uh, Bartra basically says, Dragon Son of Wrath, Captain of the Sins, you know, Demon King, blah, blah, blah. Meliodas, would you please marry Elizabeth and become the new king? And he spits out all his beer on him. And, and he basically talks. And this makes no sense to me. Well, it makes sense to me that he would go to Meliodas and Elizabeth. He loves Elizabeth. He loves Meliodas. He's trusted Meliodas for a long time with his daughter and stuff. Why? There's a line of dialogue here. It's like, okay, first off, the first in line is Margaret. Second in line is Veronica. And Elizabeth is adopted. So there might be like a, like, well, Denzel would have been in line somewhere. Um, if this is based on a true monarchy of Britannia, that's the way it would have worked. Denzel actually would have had to say in the throne at some point. Probably directly after Veronica, but maybe they would have pushed Elizabeth to the top. It just depends on the semantics. And Naja would have been in there at some point. Um, but basically, he says, Gil Thunder and Margaret, I offered it to them. So I'm like, okay, good. You offered it, to, like, offered it. But, like, that's basically her birthright, Margaret. And it's like, but they don't think they're ready. Or they're not capable of it. They, they, they don't think they're prepared for that. I'm like, and you think Elizabeth, like, I... How much do they know? Because from what we've seen, from the level they've seen, yes, they're good war heroes, but what has made you believe that Meliodas is good for the, 
is a good ruler of a, of a country. What made you think that that was a good idea? Mr. I can't cook, I, I jump at cleavage, and I drink a lot. Like, I, I mean, I don't know. Why Gil Thunder? My problem isn't with Meliodas and them offering the position. I just don't like the fact that Gil Thunder and Margaret are just one dialogue away in the same text bubble as Veronica and Greamore, which apparently are now together and her father knows it. Um... Gil Thunder and Margaret just aren't ready. They get one off to the push to the side, like, yeah, they're not ready. They already told me, no, it's fine. I'm like, who the frig is ready to run a country and be the queen and king? Like, geez. Um, and also, Meliodas would never actually be king. He would be the king consort. That's the way Britannia, that's the way the monarchy works. Uh, you know, if you marry into the family, you become a consort. You're never actually, you're never produced with that title. You'll never be the actual king. Um, it doesn't work that way. She would be the queen. Elizabeth would be Queen Elizabeth. But Meliodas would be king consort to the queen. Similar to right now, uh, you have Queen Elizabeth II in Britain right now alongside, uh, you know, Philip. Philip is not king. Even though he was actually a ruler of another country, he is not king of Britain. It, the one in charge is Queen Elizabeth II. So that's the way that would work anyway. So he can't actually be king. Anyways, that's beside the point. That's just a history lesson. The point of the fact is, is that here comes the end we all suggested. Like, they're like, Elizabeth, I pray you have no objections. This should be wonderful. Veronica and Greenmore don't want it. Uh, Gil Thunder, uh, or they're too young, and, uh, which makes no sense or whatever. And Gil Thunder and Margaret, for some reason, don't want it. One off, you know, for that. What, you know, can we do this? And Elizabeth basically, you know, Melodius is just sitting there kind of, mm, and I don't know why he's doing that. And then Elizabeth basically says, sorry, Father, I can't. I do have an objection because I'm following Meliodas to the demon realm. And then everyone's, Nani? What? What? That's literally what everybody thought was going to happen. That was literally the answer, like, weeks ago. And because we had this hiatus, because we had the Golden Week break and all this stuff, it has been sitting there mulling over for longer like, remember, this has only been a thing for a lot of the guys, a lot of the reviewers, a lot of the fans, uh, that this was basically the option. You know, Meliodas, you know, the world can't take Meliodas. So he's going to go to the Demon Realm. What's stopping Elizabeth from following him in the same way that Gelda can follow Zeldris? Like, there's nothing stopping them. In fact, there's nothing stopping from the Seven Deadly Sins from going to the Demon Realm. If he's the Demon King, which once again... I firmly believe the actual demon king, the old man, is dead. If he's the demon king, what's to stop the sins from going to the demon realm? It's not purgatory. Is it? Is it deathly? If that were the case, how could Goddess Elizabeth survive? Is it like death is the air impossible to breathe for giants and fairies? You tell me the fairy king, Bond the Immortal, Merlin, Escanor, they couldn't survive? Is it some wasteland of, of like, is it purgatory? No, it's not. As far as we know, we don't know enough about it because world building was not a big thing in this series. But I'm assuming that they could all go there. What's stopping them? And this was always everybody's idea from the get-go. Like, I know that everybody, it's not just me. I know, like, all the reviewers for Ty's Eye, the Boar's Eye, we all thought that this was going to be one of the main possibilities for the ending, that she'd just follow him. But I'm sitting back there and going one further. Why can't the Sins just follow them? And then they can spend their days together as the Seven Deadly Sins. And I don't know why Meliodas is shocked by this, and I don't know. Uh, okay, guys. Well, that's the chapter. Um, next chapter, the climax. Chapter 310, goodbye, seven deadly sins. Could be the final chapter. If it's a long chapter, I don't think this can be wrapped up in one more chapter, um, like a standard chapter, so that we might get more. Um, I don't know. I haven't heard that this was the penultimate chapter, and next is the final uh, sort of idea. So I haven't heard any news about that, so it's possible, but I don't think so. Unless, once again, this is a big 45, 50-page chapter, next chapter, then it might be the end, guys. It might be the end. So what do you guys think of the series as a whole? Because we're coming up to that. What do you guys think of uh, Chapter 309? I think it was very brushed. This is, once again, the crux of Shonen series. They don't end well, generally speaking. And this one is... And this one, unfortunately, like... They are given time, Nakba has been given time to draw out this ending the way you could do it, and he has wasted time with the ending on stupid things and has butchered character development 
and other things and others. So I didn't like this chapter at all. I felt the Gelda reveal, like the ending reveal, the whole Elizabeth's going with Meliodas, the the um, the the way the sins are acting towards Elizabeth and Meliodas' decisions here, um, just all this stuff. The Gelda thing, I think, is stupid. I don't know. What do you guys think? Love it, hate it. Please like, subscribe, comment as always. It's always very much appreciated. This has been Griever with your Behind the Bar Reviews for Chapter 309 of Seven Deadly Sins. Still a great series, just falling off hard here near the end. So, uh, as I said, guys, before, like, subscribe, comment, and we'll see you back here next time. Drink responsibly as you can see how I'm doing, and we'll see you.